asem asi ye die ne chirim e wo bokina faso a asem asi wo bokina faso no e hu yi pa ya so na team economic community of west african state eye ecowas ye nyine nim se west africa for ye use one passport one biometric passport ah obetu kwa ko ba bia no na wo de record na ecowas logo e no modia passport no o modia to front side ye ka bi she mo enwa ni ne ya bokina faso alanchi o mu new passport ei ah eche sampa se se di omo ni eko was ton kwanta din ton tan passport na ibrahim traore the president of burkina faso 35 years old boy our military near on na o lead the country to the glorious land a branti passport no o de buy no ah ya showcase no o be die di se Aye, echo was logo na at that West Africa for your passport, your passport from Zoom, a Niso. Logo na at that West Africa for your passport, front side. Sal echo was logo no, where you have you so. A brand na chest away, Bema, more Piao. Wait, any friend of Bema. And your Bema made the Obet number, the affair, and talk, I can't be any day. Bema made the Becasa, Obet acting. Mi ba be mo wa ti mu asem sisi ai e wo video ya me de be to top me e ti se mo da aba boke na ni se they are using their own national passport mo ma he video no e wo top si ma ba ku ni ni dem on september 3rd burkina faso's government unveiled its brand new biometric passport in a ceremony presided over by the minister of security mohamedo sana this new passport is no ordinary document it boasts advanced technology, including polycarbonate pages, enhanced security features, and an electronic chip for storing large amounts of data. But what makes this new passport especially significant are the things that are missing. For the first time in decades, Burkina Faso's passport does not feature the ECOWAS logo, the symbol of the economic community of West African states. Yes, you heard me right. ECOWAS has been the economic and political hub for West Africa since its founding in 1975, representing 15 countries and promoting regional integration. Burkina Faso, alongside Mali and Niger, was a member until recent political shifts saw the trio forming a new alliance, the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. While this new passport confirms that Burkina Faso is officially severing ties with ECOWAS, many had hoped it might return. The removal of the ECOWAS logo is a definitive sign that this door is closing. Interestingly, the new passport doesn't carry the AES logo either. The AES, formed by Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger after leaving ECOWAS, was expected to feature prominently on national documents like passports. However, the treaty was recently signed and some works needed to be finalized. Before we continue, just a gentle reminder to like and share our videos. Also, subscribe if you haven't done to stay informed on the latest African economic, political, and social developments, and explore how global geopolitics impact the continent. Okay, let's listen to the Minister of Security, Mohamedou Sana, on the new passport before we continue. The new passports, whose launch took place this morning, are the result of a long process that began in 2022, following an uncompromising assessment of the old system that had been operational since 2018. The new passports, which will be produced using this new issuance platform, belong to the latest generation of passports recommended by international civil aviation oversight bodies, notably the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. With this new technical platform, at the forefront of modernity, major innovations have been integrated into both the collection and production system, as well as into the passports themselves. In fact, the new system will allow, among other things, online pre-enrollment through a simplified and dematerialized procedure, flexible enrollment accessible in connected mode, online or offline mode, and the instant transmission of passport enrollment data collected in embassies via specialized lines to the personalization centers located at ONI, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This will enable the availability of passports for Burkinabi citizens abroad, 
within the same time frames as those residing in the country. Additionally, a real-time tracking system for the production and issuance process of passports will allow citizens to follow the status of their applications and authorities to ensure transparent management. Security will be reinforced through rigorous controls and biometric authentication mechanisms, reducing the risks of fraud and identity theft, while guaranteeing better protection of citizens' personal data. Interoperability with other national systems will facilitate secure and efficient exchange of identification data. There will also be an expansion of our enrollment capacities, with the opening of a VIP center in Ouagadougou and a third enrollment center in Tenkodogo, after the ones in Ouagadougou and Bobo Diolasso. As for the new passports, whether they are ordinary, service, diplomatic, or refugee passports, they are equipped with electronic chips with a greater data storage capacity. Furthermore, the new passport has 34 pages, compared to 32 for the previous one, and the data page for each type of passport is made of colored polycarbonate and includes cutting-edge security features. All these elements, drawn from the range of characteristic features of the new passports to be officially launched, comply with international standards and are part of the new generation of passports recommended to states by the ICAO. Now let's continue. Here's where it gets interesting. What does this mean for Burkinabi citizens traveling within Africa, particularly in the ECOWAS region? The old ECOWAS passport allowed free movement between member states without the need for visas. But now that Burkina Faso has exited ECOWAS, its citizens may no longer have that benefit. ECOWAS had previously warned of restrictions, stating that travelers from Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger might face visa requirements when entering ECOWAS countries. This, along with the potential loss of residency and business rights in ECOWAS nations, could significantly hinder the ease of movement that West Africans once took for granted. For a landlocked country like Burkina Faso, which relied on ECOWAS for trade and travel, this change is monumental. Citizens will now have to navigate new visa regulations and potentially longer, more complicated border checks. However, for Burkinabe citizens, the benefits of ECOWAS exit far outweigh the little inconvenience of visa application. Again, ECOWAS cannot play boss in this matter because ECOWAS citizens also will require visa to visit the AES states when everything is fully functional. Despite the political implications, the new passport is undeniably a step toward modernity. Produced in collaboration with Chinese tech company Emtech, it is equipped with some of the most advanced features in biometric identification. The e-passport contains a polycarbonate data page, state-of-the-art security features, and an electronic chip designed to prevent forgery and protect sensitive information. In fact, Burkina Faso is the first West African nation to adopt these advanced technologies, setting a new standard for passport security in the region. In addition, citizens can now pre-enroll online, making the passport application process faster and more accessible, especially for those living abroad. The government has introduced registration kits in various diplomatic missions around the world streamlining the process for Burkinabe citizens living overseas. With these innovations, the country is embracing administrative modernity, even if it means walking away from its old regional alliances. On a larger scale, Burkina Faso's move to issue a passport without the ECOWAS logo raises questions about the future of regional integration across Africa. ECOWAS has long been considered a model for the African Union's dream of a visa-free continent where citizens can move freely between member states. However, with Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger forming their own bloc, it's unclear how this will affect ongoing efforts toward African unity and the Pan-African Passport Initiative. Will other countries in the region follow suit and create their own travel systems? If more countries leave ECOWAS or create their own alliances, we could see a fragmentation of travel systems that complicates movement across Africa. While the African Union is working toward a universal passport, political shifts like these may slow down the process or even alter it entirely. However, ECOWAS must be mindful of the saying that he who lives in a glass house does not throw stones. While the likes of South African politician, Julius Malema, is advocating visa-free Africa for Africans, 
It is absurd that ECOWAS has already threatened AES states with travel restrictions. It was the same ECOWAS that that imposed sanctions on the Sahel states and also threatened them with military invasion, which they could not carry out. ECOWAS has played the role of the aggressor so far. So what does Burkina Faso's new passport mean for its citizens and the rest of Africa? It's a symbol of independence, technology, and progress, but it also comes with challenges, especially for those who are used to the benefits of regional free movement of persons and goods under ECOWAS. For now, Burkina Faso is charting its own course, but one thing's for sure, this passport represents a significant break from the past. What do you think about Burkina Faso's new passport? Will this decision change the way Africans travel? Let us know in the comments. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion. The old EcoWest passport allowed free movement I don't know if I'm going to the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I know it is out. ECOWAS had previously won.